I'm not going to lie, my title is slightly misleading. I'm going to use the most of my time to give you some extra tips as well as just one three words. I figured it's not often you get 100 people plus to come and listen to what you're doing. And there's some tips that I like to have and share around. So I'm taking the chance to um, commandeer the entire call and offer some other things that found I found useful over time as well. So some of this about three quarters, this will be what three words. A little introduction into me and who I am. So my name is Matt Beard. I am the development team leader at a UK company called Data8, who specialise in data quality. Uh, I am usually on the other side of the screen on these things. I'm an organiser, so I organise the Scottish Summit, which is one of the largest UK ones. It's actually in Manchester this year, but that's a long conversation for a different time. Uh, I organise user groups around the country as well, uh, as well as curate the PP Dev Weekly, which is a, a curated version of all development um, articles that go out across the week. So if you want to subscribe to a useful stack list every week you get, then that's absolutely worth doing to that. A few other things. So I'm a certified connector author and an independent connector author. They are two subtly different things that I will mention during this call. Uh, and I support Liverpool and football. And if anybody is watching, welcome to Wrexham and follows Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney, then yes, I live about five minutes away from the Wrexham ground. So you've probably seen my house on Welcome to Wrexham in the drone shot in the guy. Um, if you don't know what Welcome to Wrexham is, then ignore that comment. So today's agenda, intro to what three words, as well as the app that I've built, some independent versus certified comments and things to do, and then a couple of GitHub tips that um, someone told me once that really resonated with me and helped me try and be where I'm at today and help me get that little bit edge on other people uh, um, in, the, in the community to try and help other people. So let's start with what three words. So what, why, what three words, what, what is what three words and what's it designed to do? So I don't know if anybody's heard of what three words before. So let's go on a scenario. Let's let's go on a nice woodland walk and we walk for miles and miles and miles and something happens and then you are stranded in the middle of nowhere and for some reason you need some sort of support or something like that. So you pull out your phone and you make a phone call and help, I'm, I'm lost with nothing around. And, and everybody's usual idea is I've got a GPS, I've got a phone, I can maybe be able to work out my GPS with Google Maps, but then I need to tell that person uh, where I am and I would like some sort of assistance. So you read out your, you're that long. I'm 53.264436 and minus 2.8770825, at which point the person goes and he's got a pen and whatever was happening slows down slightly. And if this is an emergency, then time is of the essence. Um, so everyone gets confused with their brains. They don't know what's going on and numbers are, the numbers are important. So this is a useful thing that I, I, I found out recently and I think it's very useful to know. So the seventh decimal place of a latitude and longitude if you increase that by one, you move in the world by 1.11 centimetres, which is not, which is shows how accurate that long can be, and how much um, leverage you've got. Not leverage, how much um, difference you've got should you get a number wrong. However, that scales up as you go to the left on the number. So if you get the number for the decimal place, one number wrong, you are 111 kilometres in the wrong place. So when you are typing these numbers out, it's super important you get them right because the more wrong you get it, then you could end up in the middle of nowhere. So this is where what three words comes in. And what three words breaks the entire globe down into three meter by three meter squares and gives each one of those squares a unique name with three words. Three, uh, at this point, English words. I think there is translations, but the, for the purpose of this demo, I've got it all in English. Uh, and every single one is unique. So you can have um, all sorts of things available with that. So if you had the phone call and you now said I'm an extra piped baggage, that is significantly easy to tell you where I am. And you've now got me pinpointed down to a three meter square. And I you know I can safely stay there and you will find me where I'm at. So some useful use cases for this, because obviously people always go, I've got my phone, I can share my location. And that's a fair comment. However, there is some more use, use cases on this. So the Mongolian Postal Service use this to deliver their uh, their mail because their addressing stand, their addressing system is, is poor. Uh, Mercedes-Benz have it in their cars now. Um, a lot of that is used for things like deliveries. So you might want it at your back gate or you might want it down the road or you might want it, I don't know, if you live on a farm, you want it in your outhouse. The what three words on that will help you get to very specific places very quickly. Uh, Dominus Pizza across Europe use it. Uh, and festivals, I think, is a really good use case for it. So Glastonbury in the UK and the Electric Daisy Festival in the US are two examples that I found. And it might even be something as simple as um, the, the restrooms are at XYZ. And you now know where that's going, because otherwise you go, it's across that field, you walk for a little bit, you turn left after a little bit, you go into that field. So actually having these pinpointed locations of the words is super useful. So what have I got? I've got a bit of a demo here. So the first thing I'll do is refresh this because this never works first time after a reload um, and all this is doing is a fairly crude demo 
Um, and one thing to note here, and this is one of the, the tips that I've always got that some people don't know, and I certainly didn't know this for years, was that actually, even though the Power Automate connector is in this app, um, I don't ever call Power Automate at all. So version one of this passed it out to the, passed it out to Flow, it did its thing, and then the Flow passed it back in again and did its own thing in here. Um, what I recently learned when I was doing all this sort of stuff is when you've now got the, the idea of data sets, you can actually just add the data source in itself. And even though there's no data behind this connection, I can use it. And the way I always liken it to is I grew up from an Excel background, and I had all sort of custom functions that I could write in there. And it basically gives me that functionality. So what I've got here when I play my app is I've got the lat long and I've got some throw through words and I can translate between the two of them. So that's where I am right now. If I move 111 kilometers away, as we now know what that's doing, I've gone 111 kilometers in one direction and I'm now at fallen timed bulldozer. And I can just keep moving around the world and I can go and see where I'm going and I can go to everywhere else. Now, all this data that's driven from this is all coming from the what through words API. So the, the, lo the, the nearest place that's coming from the what through words API um, and all I'm doing in these different things is a bunch of power effects and ultimately I'm converting the lat long to what through words and I'm doing some stuff with the power effects to uh, place it back into the results and the other way around. It's super simple uh, and it's a nice little demo, um, but it, it shows the power of what through words, how you can quickly translate between these two different things. Now, the one extra thing that I did with this, and I think this is another useful workaround, and I think this is a, a good example for, for the PMP um, GitHub actually, is dealing with autocomplete. So if you're anything like me and a bit childish, what happens is when you can write three words, you write out three funny words until you find a place and then you find funny patterns in those things. So what I introduced was this idea of an autocomplete. So as I type now, I'm recalculating that on the fly all the time. Now, um, I've got some sliders there that are doing some strange things. So winter, winter, winter. So I'm sorry to anybody that lives in um, Chicago, Illinois, but you are winter, winter, winter. So I'm guessing that's the what three words sort of way of saying it's cold over there. Um, so winter, winter, winter is one of the ones that I found. Now, the reason I've got these sliders here is a useful little demo. So the on change of text boxes only fires when it loses its focus, which is not useful in an autocomplete world because I want it. I want it nice and responsive. I want it as I'm typing the letter. But the on change of the value of a slider changing is every time the value changes. So I have a slider here and all that slider is doing is that is showing its value as the length of my inputs. So every time I input change, my slider value changes, which then fires my own change. I could then hide this from my view so it's not there. And I've recreated this autocomplete behavior with a slider connected to a, a, a text box, which seems unusual and you don't know why you would normally do that, but I think that is a really useful thing and I've got it on a beta thing while I'm trying to test it. So it's just a useful thing if you're trying to get any sort of autocomplete type text. Um, the other thing I found, so if you're ever wondering where the most expensive place in the world is, so yeah, it's why to be a test, it'll fail at times. Um, the most expensive place in the world to live. Your credit card is denied, then it's in Ontario, Canada. So there you go. So there's another ways of finding what three words. Now, just to jump back into my slides, which are there. Um, a few other comments that I've got while I've got you here, just to make the most of my time, and I don't often get the opportunity to speak to this many people. Some little tips between independent and certified connectors, because they're in the, the Power Automate ecosystem. And actually, having been through both situations, if you own the API, the situation is super, super similar. Um, a certified connector uh, built as a custom connector, it's shared on GitHub as open source, it can be a preview or GAF, it's been run for a while. Uh, you can attach C sharp code. And those four, those four things are the same. Every process for an independent connector is exactly the same. So even the, 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 the larger companies that use and have their connectors out there, they are done in the exact same way that we as community people develop them and put them out there. Um, the only difference is they own their respective APIs behind the scenes and they get a little bit, a little bit more analytics behind the scenes in the ISV studio. But I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's useful to see, but that's great about it. And to prove that, there is my certified connector and my independent connector within uh, GitHub that they are exactly the same structure, exactly the same. There is no difference in them. And I just think that's a useful thing to know that the the the, the, the premium stuff and the, the certified stuff isn't using anything different than, than we as um, the community are using. I think that's actually a very, very powerful message. There's the one difference. So on the left hand side is me getting some success rates based on my uh, uh, my independent my certified connector, excuse me. And then on the right hand side, I get manual emails every week to tell me how my independent connector is doing. And that's the only real difference in the whole situation. And I just find that personally amazing. 
And then the final thing I'm going to close with, because I think this is another useful thing that I think is people don't realize, is subscribing on GitHub. Now, I like to be ahead of the game. I know I like to know what's coming. I like to be on the cutting edge of technologies. I was one of the first to have a certified connector. Um, I was the second person ever to get a PCF component in a solution approved into AppSource. So I really try and like to be at the cutting edge of these technologies. Um, and the, the way I do that is I subscribe in GitHub because everything is open source nowadays. So you can see these things. So what you can see here, for example, is these were commits made to in, in, in public to the Power Automate Game. So you can see what's coming. This hasn't rolled out around the world yet. This is being rolled out around the world, but you can see it's on its way. So you might only be a week ahead of the game. But for me, it's always been a huge benefit to, to know what's coming, keep ahead of it, and look for the things that I care about. And remember, as we've seen in this already, connectors aren't the only thing on GitHub. So everything that we've, we've spoken about today so far is on GitHub. So it might be PowerFX. There was PowerFX functions that were released on, if you look into the commits, months before they were announced. And it's just useful to keep ahead of the game. So that's my one little tip, and that's something that really help propel me to try and be at the cutting edge of the technology that I use. Um, although the biggest tip I'll give for you is if you are to do that is make sure you have Outlook rules because they will fill your inbox up pretty quickly if you're subscribing to everything. So yeah, there is also thing, Thetaverse Service Client PowerFX VS Code. It's, uh, it's, it's all open source as well as all the PMP or the community, community source stuff. So have a look at the Microsoft repositories, have a look at what you think you might care about and set up those subscriptions is my genuine top tip on how to be ahead of the game. There you go, there's the power effects proof that there was things coming out. So there was some is match stuff that was implemented for a couple of days ago. So you might see those functionalities changing over time and you can see that publicly. Uh, some useful links and the, 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 there's too many for now. Um, so I will be shared after this by David. They might be appearing in the chat already. And if not, they'll be on the videos after this if you've got anything to care about or reach out to me and I'm happy to talk about any of this stuff at any time. And ultimately, that's it. That's me done. I'm happy to pass over to David or whoever's next. Awesome, Matt. Thank you. Perfect timing there, too. I tell you, that was impressive and, and great tips there, uh, everyone. Really, the uh, subscribing on GitHub is fantastic uh, also because any repo and documentation for Microsoft is done in GitHub. So it really allows you to be able to follow some of those documentation updates. Uh, and the independent publisher connectors, you can create one in less than five minutes uh, in all actuality. We showed that at the M365 conference. So definitely get involved. It's one of the nicer and more fun ways to get uh, your actual work into the product, which is pretty awesome. So thanks, Matt. Well done. Mm -hmm.